y'all this berry punch from Min minute maid slaps actually not just slaps but slops hi guys so today i am going to do a little tutorial of a certain makeup look so friday i went to see uh, cruella which by the way fantastic movie like literally the most fantastic thing ever in that movie the most astonishing things in that movie were two things actually three one the acting two the costuming plus setting and three the makeup like the makeup was just amazing to look at and the aesthetic choices that that movie made which was the 70s like aesthetic punk rock era oh my god it was so amazing to watch just how the makeup and the costuming fit that era so well uh, I, I was just astounded just astounded and i love that movie to death truly i do uh, i want to recreate one uh, signature look from uh from that movie which is where uh, emma stone who played cruella had this type of eye makeup that was so intricate in a sense it was like a winged kind of eyeliner, but it wasn't eyeliner, it was just shadow, like a black shadow with like silver in the inner corner. I said to myself, if they ever made a sequel to this particular like movie franchise, I said, what if we took this aesthetic, except made it more like a little bit like how the 90s and you know 2000s like were with the makeup style, and maybe even now with the 2020s or 2021, who knows? <laughs> Let's get into it, shall we? So with this uh, particular inspired makeup, I was scrolling through my Instagram and I saw this particular picture right here. And it was like the opposite of like, you know, how we normally do our eyeshadow, you know, which is, you know, shimmer on the outside, matte on the inside. And it was interesting. I said, I'm gonna do that uh, same like concept with shimmer and mattes, but I'm gonna keep the traditional like dark to light in a sense. I'm gonna prime. Uh, I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Matte Putty Primer. Take my makeup spatula and just take a good size amount of it and just pat it onto the skin. Now that I'm primed and ready, I wanna use a certain foundation uh, that I have been using for a little while now. Um, it is from MAC, by the way. It's the MAC Studio Fix Tech Cream to Powder Foundation. I do like this foundation, personally, because it is a cream to powder thing. Um, it may, like, it take a while for it to sort of, like, you know, set and stuff like that. But overall, if you let it set, it will work beautifully. Truly, it does. And it doesn't really move, truly. And so I'm going to use this foundation in the shade NW40. And then taking my Morphe M439 brush, I'm just going to go into this foundation and I'm just going to sort of dot it onto the skin first, onto certain areas. And then I'm going to stipple it. Now this foundation in particular, it is a bit red for me, just a little bit red. But I will say once you put on concealer, which is, you know, a highlighting concealer, it will sort of neutralize the foundation. So it's like a very natural coverage. It's meant to be like a very like natural full on coverage. And it smells really nice too. It really does. It smells really, really good. Now that the foundation is on, uh, we're now gonna go into concealing. I'm gonna use the uh, MAC Studio Fix 24 Hour uh, Smooth Wear Concealer, which is in the shade NW35, which is my highlighting shade. And since this is a, a full coverage kind of concealer, I'm going to place the concealer in certain areas and I'm going to dot it onto my eyes first like that. And then do my other method, which is highlight the cheekbones, highlight the mustache area, my chin, my nose, and my forehead.
And that was literally just like one dip from it. Like once I pull out the wand, I only did all of this in one dip. And then taking my Morphe M449 brush, I'm going to just, just stipple this concealer under my eye. Very gently though. You don't want to go hard on your eye. This isn't my first time using the concealer, but when I have used this concealer, because I've only used this concealer for like three months now, this concealer is literally butter. Like it's butter onto the skin. Now with the uh, foundation and concealer, I now applied onto the face, we're now gonna go into powder. You're probably wondering, why are you putting powder all over your face when you literally have a foundation that says cream to powder? Well, I did test, test this foundation out. Uh, it is cream to powder. Again, it takes a little while, like maybe 20, 30 minutes to like fully like dry in a sense into a sort of powdery finish. But I will say if you use a powder, your favorite powder, be it translucent or a little bit of a color in it, it does help sort of, in my opinion, it kind of just activates it a little bit. It just like, I guess works faster is how I see it. But you don't need like a lot of powder. You just need like just a little bit of powder just to activate it just a slight bit. I'm gonna take my uh, Cody Airspun face powder in the shade Rosy Beige. Taking my Morphe E3 brush, I'm gonna go into the powder, take any excess off, and I'm just going to just set under my eyes first. Make sure there's no creasing on, under your eyes first before powdering your highlight first. Just a little bit more powder, just a slight bit. And I'm going to powder the face and jawline ever so slightly. Now that we used a, a powder that was a little bit more of like a translucent-ish kind of a color, I'm gonna go in with foundation powder just to uh, sort of help even neutralize more of the base sort of thing, not really the highlighting area. I'm gonna take my MAC Studio Fix powder in NW40 and I'm gonna be taking my Morphe M527 brush, dip into here, and I'm just going to stipple this powder onto the areas that I didn't highlight. Normally I would use this brush for bronzing, but this is a powder brush at the end of the day. And I think for powder, powder foundation, this brush works amazing. Now that we're powdered officially, just a little bit powdered, not too powdery, just a little bit powdered. <laughs> uh, we're now gonna go into contouring. I'm gonna use my Morphe M500 brush and my NYX Professional Makeup Highlight and Contouring uh, palette. I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. As you can see, this is my favorite shade. And with this brush, this is my favorite brush to go into this shade. <laughs> they can take this little color here. And with this, I'm going to follow my natural bone structure. I'm gonna try and emulate how the movie was when it comes to contouring, just a slight bit. But I'm tailoring it to how my face shape is, you know, because I'm not like Emma Stone. I don't have her like really beautifully like rounded yet sculpted kind of look. I'm going to use the tip of this brush. I'm going to lightly go into this color. I'm gonna focus the contour in the back first. Run that in to midway, about right here, and sort of blend up. Blend up into the cheek. Always, always blend up when you contour. I will say, like I said, y'all, the movie was very good. It was really, really good. I love the um, aesthetic, again, that the movie brought. It was very 70s. It was very, again, that punk rock sort of era when it came to what the, what the setting was. Very sort of that. It went to like mid 1960s to like almost to the 70s. Oh, so beautifully done. And I will say for the movie, you know, with some Disney movies, you know, like Maleficent or uh, sometimes Mulan or Lady and the Tramp, maybe a little bit, just a little bit in this kind of thing within the acting, sometimes the storyline would feel a little slow. Like some of the character like uh, synopsis within the very beginning of the film will feel kind of like slow in a sense, you know, you're just like, okay, let's get to the real story here. But for this one, actually, it felt very fast. But in a good way though. And I say in a good way because we already know the story of Cruella, right? We know she, you know, is this woman who wants to kill uh, Dalmatians <laughs> for a coat, you know, or that's what we perceive. But within the movie, there is a reason behind why she hates 
why she hates Dalmatians. There's a reason behind it. By the way, this is spoiler alert in case you haven't seen the film. I'm gonna tell the film, so sorry, spoiler alert. Anyway, so in the film, we under we kind of understand why we why she hates Dalmatians is because she was killed by them. Or not well, she wasn't killed by them. Her mother was killed by Dalmatians. She grew up poor and uh, she was going to ask one woman, who we will know later within the film, for uh, money uh, to help her out because she was in a poor situation. And as little Corella was like getting chased by the dogs, um, the dogs jumped over her and then pushed her mom off the little um, like overpass. Like literally, she she just got pushed over by them. It's really sad, honestly. It was a really sad moment in that film because you know i would get that as a uh, little cruella is now an orphan uh, she then meets her you know now new friends who are the goons that we may know in london and they all stay stayed within this little broken down house you know and uh yeah they now live together for all their life really oh and by the way before she came cruella she was estella clever and now taking my morphe e62 brush I'm going to start contouring my nose. Now with uh, the contouring now applied onto certain places that I want them to be, we're gonna go in with blush. In the film, you know, I didn't notice a lot of color into Emma Stone's face when she did Corella. Again, it was the punk rock era, so not a lot of, you know, color was really there, you know, or there was color. There was color in the 70s uh, when it came to like looks, but when it came to like the punk rock era of like, music and makeup and things like that within that side of fashion at that time. It was almost basically no color except black, white, and sometimes red, and sometimes some other color. I'm gonna use my MAC powder blush in the shade Raisin. And with my Morphe M405 brush, I'm just going to dip into here and just follow mostly behind the contour or within the contour. I'm not gonna go all the way here, just mostly here within this area and blend up make sure you're blending up and stipple the storyline within the film was beautiful i will say that the one fun thing about that i loved about the film was that she had two personalities estella and cruella when estella was cruella she bashed like a lot of the the baronesses who was like the head of like a fashion company and basically found uh, Cruella. Cruella would like just bombard all of her events that like she would be in like bombard them with like all these like creative fashion looks. There was one where she was like in a like a uh, in a leather jacket and I think red pants or black pants I can't remember and like she had like this makeup that like that was on her face that said the future. Oh my god that was gorgeous. That was the 70s like that was that expression of punk rock that was that. I will say that some things felt a little bit modernized to our generation, just a little bit. But overall, it wasn't it wasn't modernized too much because it kept that aesthetic of the 70s into a complete like niche in a sense. She was also in like this kind of thing where she was also in this kind of thing is where it was like a long gown and she was like on top of her limo or like car or something. And oh my God, beautiful. I'll leave a picture right here if I could find it. Oh my God. Now that the blush is on, which again, nothing too crazy. It's more so of a structural kind of a thing just to give dimension for my face shape. You don't have to use blush. You can just use contour. Or you don't even have to contour. This is just, again, my inspired look. I'm gonna take the Morphe Brow Cream in the shade Chocolate Mousse. And with my Morphe M158 brush, which is a very, 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 very thin brush. I'm gonna dip into here. First of all, I'm going to brush my brows up just a tiny, tiny bit. And then with the product on the brush, I'm going to fill in my brows in a sense. Sketch and fill in, sort of. Now that the brows are on, which is, <laughs> I kind of like them for, what I'm wanting to do here. I'm going to cut the brows. I'm gonna cut the brows with the Morphe M410 brush and I'm gonna use my good old fashioned MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot in the shade Land Low 
to cut these brows and to use as eye primer. I dig into here. I'm going to just follow the natural curve of my brow. And I'm gonna kind of follow from the tail too, like that. I'm going to blend down too onto my eyelid. Just a slight bit though. Now that the brows are cut, I'm gonna take my Morphe 166 brush, go into my paint pot, dip in there three times as per usual. I'm just going to dot there three times. Take my mixing palette and just take any excess off and just blend it. Blend your eye primer. Now that we're uh, cut and primed, we're now gonna go into the eyeshadow. Since Cruella's like whole aesthetic is more so like black and white and red all over. I'm gonna need like an eyeshadow that's more like of a grayscale kind of an eye. So, since it's almost been a year since I've, you know, reviewed this eyeshadow palette, I'll leave a link somewhere on the screen. I'll also leave the thumbnail right there. We're gonna go into the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Cremated Eyeshadow Palette. Now again, I did review this one year ago and uh, as I said in my video, it all seems like one color into my skin tone when I've used uh, a few of the shades. I've done some looks in the past, like last year. I'll leave them right here on the screen just so that you can look and see what I've made and what theme I've made within it, you know. <laughs> <coughs> this is the palette that I'm gonna be using uh, for a today's look, so. I apologize. Um, for anyone that's offended, I'm sorry. But this is the only grayscale palette that I have, so. So with my Morphe M562 brush, which is a very, very, very tiny sort of detailed brush, I'm gonna go in with a more, not necessarily light, light color, and not a very light color that is um, fully gray, but I am gonna go in with a color within this row that is sort of complementary to the matte white shade that we will be using here into this palette. I'm gonna go into the shade Wednesday. And as I take this shade, I'm just gonna go right here, sort of above the crease, or on the crease actually. I'm gonna go on the crease and blend up in a sense. So I'm not like going anywhere too dramatic or too drastic. Um, because I am gonna be like winging it out. It's not, but this is more so of a like a placement holder, you know, like a like a tracing kind of a thing. But this is more so of like where I need to stop. But it does help like, you know, complement the colors in a sense, the black and the whites. My transition shade, basically. <laughs> yeah, in the film, uh, when it came to the makeup, the makeup was just so, again, ravishing to look at. I don't know who the makeup artist was, but I'll leave whoever if i research it i'll leave like her picture if she has a picture and name like on this like on the screen but whoever did the makeup for that she did an amazing job just keeping the whole 70s aesthetic within the makeup just oh my god there was a character in the film that was like a bowie-esque character and he wore like this eyeliner that was like an intricate eyeliner that was kind of like like a winged Kind of liner but it was like downward in a sense like lightning bolts in a sense that character was a nod to david bowie and i think to me that was genius because you can't have the 70s without referencing people like david bowie and um other people within that punk rock scene like jane county and iggy pop and like you can't reference the 70s or the 60s and within that punk rock era and not mention them. Again, I just thought that was a very clever, clever thing for that makeup artist to do and probably for the director to do too. So I applaud them immensely. Now that the uh, transition color is out the way, <laughs> we're gonna go in with the black. I'm gonna take my Morphe M456 brush go into this black shade that's called Hearse, dig into here, and I'm going to sort of go into the crease right here. I'm gonna blend like this, like I'm taking the brush like this sideways, 
I'm going to blend into the crease. I'm going to wing it too. I'm going to use a different brush to sort of give it a more winged effect into the temple in a sense. But with this brush, I'm going to wing it. Yeah, can I maybe use this same brush? I'm not entirely sure. But this is what I'm going to do. We're kind of improvising in a sense of what brushes to use. <laughs> I'm going to go into hers again. And because this brush is a little bit smaller, I'm going to go into the inner corner here at the black. And as you see, I'm kind of blending the, the black sort of all the way into the temple. It's kind of like a dr very dramatic winged eyeliner. And I think within the makeup of how that was, uh, or how they did it, it wasn't necessarily perfect. You know, like, like, yeah, the edges were clean, but I don't think it had to be like exactly perfect. You know what I mean? And if you feel like you want to soften the edges a little bit, you can take your powder brush and just sort of swipe and stipple. Now that, um, we kind of got the shape of it down. We're now going to get into the sparkle. So within like the sparkle that I want to use, I'm going to use this shade right here, which is called Angel of Death. It's a black sparkle that I want to use like right here onto the black areas that I used. Taking um, some MAC Fix Plus, or you can use water. It doesn't matter which one you use. This is just water that I filled up with in the bottle. <laughs> I'm going to wet my brush. By the way, this is the Morphe M522 brush. I'm gonna go in with the shade Angel of Death right here. And within this uh, product or the brush, since this brush is so soft, I'm going to just lightly, lightly swipe and pack in the color or the sparkle into the area. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but if you look really closely, Shimmery. It's kind of like a bluish reflex in a sense. Dip into this brush again. And now I'm going to do the inner corner, which is oh, scary. Oh, by the way, within that film too, Emma Thompson. Oh my god. Normally I would see her in like um, weird ish kind of quirky characters, you know like uh, Nanny McPhee or uh, the writer in that uh, Will Ferrell movie, um, uh, Stranger Than Fiction. Normally I would see her play characters like that, but to see her play a bitch, like a Patti Lapone kind of character, I was like, when I was watching the movie though, I was like, why couldn't they do Patti Lapone? You know, within the, cause I love me some Patti Lapone. And I thought Patti Lapone, if they did this movie like in Broadway, I think it would have been like Patti Lapone would have played that role of like an evil, like evil, banal kind of bitch, you know? But I guess they just gave it to Emma Thompson. But with Emma Thompson in that movie and she played the Baroness, oh my god, so good. But with the white, we're gonna use this shade that's called Death Blow, and I'm gonna use a flat sort of uh, eyeshadow brush. This is the Morphe M224 brush. I'm gonna dig into here. I'm going to just pack on this white. This is a very pigmented white, I will say that. Very pigmented white. But I'm afraid with the shimmer, it's probably gonna mix. My goal of this look is to keep the black shimmery, but the white matte. Sort of like a spotlight eye, but the spotlight eye is a matte shadow. For the eyeliner, to sort of keep it into that, into that theme of uh, black, white, and red all over, I'm actually gonna use a red eyeliner. And this is the uh, ColourPop Cream Gel Color in the shade Venus. And taking my Morphe M443 brush, I'm gonna dip into here. This is a trick that I'm using if I'm not using my sponge or if I don't have my sponge with me when I'm putting on eyeliner. I take my brush, I'm taking my Morphe M449 brush, the brush that I use for concealer. I'm gonna go down onto here as I look through my mirror right here. And I can just apply my eyeliner like this. Now it can be cream, it can be pencil, it can be whatever kind of eyeliner you're using. But this is the technique that I use personally. Taking my Morphe M152 brush, I'm gonna go back into the shade Hearse. And with the shade, I'm just going to smoke it out, lightly smoke it out. 
because this is a very black shadow. Smoke it out ever so slightly. Sort of blend within the liner in a sense. Don't go all the way onto the liner. That way it makes the liner look dull. You don't want to do that. We're now going to go into mascara. So the mascara that I'm going to be using is the Benefit Bad Gal Bang Mascara, which is a mascara that I truly do adore and I love so much. I'm just going to just apply it like normal. Then taking my Morphe M131 brush, I'm just going to put the mascara all over into this lash pan brush and I'm just going to apply it into the bottom lashes. So with my Morphe E36 brush, I'm gonna go in with a shimmer, a little bit of a shimmer in the inner corner, like a white sort of shimmer. So I'm gonna go into this shade, which is called Diamond Ashes, which is a very, very, very highly pigmented shimmer. I'm gonna use like a dot of it, like a little dot of it, like see, like that, like barely dab it and just apply like so. I'm gonna use these lashes, which I finally, figured out how to pronounce them. They're called Valicia. These lashes are in the style Queen, which are like a dramatic lash, but it's like kind of subtle in the same way. With my lashes on my lash tweezers, I'm gonna use my duo brush on adhesive with vitamins in dark and just apply them to the lashes ever so slightly and just wait for them to dry. Ugh. Lashes are now applied. It was a struggle, but we did it, y'all. <laughs> For highlighter, I'm not gonna be too, not really too dramatic with highlighter. But for highlighter today, I'm gonna use the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, Glow Kit palette, highlighting palette, which a friend of mine gave, gave to me. Thank you so much, Amber, I love you. And there's a good amount of shades, actually, for almost every skin tone, almost. Especially if you're someone of my skin tone that's very high in melanin. I think I may go into something that's a little bit light, but not too light. I think I'm gonna mix white sand and snow just to see how it looks. So let me just mix those two. And I'm just gonna focus the highlighter back here. It's mostly back here. Ooh, actually that's a pretty shade. And for the lips, I'm gonna be using MAC Cosmetics' Retro Matte Liquid Lip Color in the shade High Fashion which is very fitting for this look. <laughs> and to set the face, I'm gonna use MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. This is not water, this is the actual <laughs> uh, thing. <laughs> And this is essentially the final result. I mean, the only thing that's not complete though is my little costume. So um, let me uh, get dressed and I'll be right back. Oh, what do you call me? Call me. Cruella. And here is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I hope you guys uh, love this sort of inspirational look that I did with uh, the film version of, you know, Cruella. I, I really do hope you guys like this look and maybe you guys would like imitate this look. I don't know. <laughs> also, follow me on all my social media. Follow me on all of it. Uh, I'm normally there all the time normally because, I mean, it's the summer and I got nothing else to do. <laughs> I'm also on TikTok, so the kids finally got me. So follow me on TikTok if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye!